church at a saloon? That's right, next on Significant Insights. Hello and welcome to the program. I am in Cave Creek, Arizona, and I'm at a place called the Buffalo Chip Saloon and Steakhouse. Now, the Buffalo Chip is known for a lot of things. They are a hangout for Green Bay Packer fans. They also have incredible live music, and also out back on Wednesdays and Fridays, they have live bull riding. But even more than that, also out back, every Sunday morning, they have church. It's called Church at the Chip. And I'm gonna be talking to the owner of the Buffalo Chip as well as the pastor of the church. Hey guys, good to have you on the program. I, uh, I've really been looking forward to this. Steve, we, Shirley and I, came to uh, your, your church, Church on the Chip, mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago. And we, were, we went a few times. We were snowbirds at that time. And from that time on, I said, someday I got to tell that story. I mean, this yeah. is an unusual situation. I got to tell that story. Um, how, how did the two of you meet? Well, I don't know if you remember exactly, but... Because uh, I don't remember much. You, don't, you do <laughs> no. remember when we no. first met? Well, I spoke yeah. once, they used to, it, 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 for a, a community event called Wild West Days in the fall, yeah. they would offer a cowboy church uh, that Sunday morning of that event. That here in Cave on, Creek. Here in Cave, Cave Creek, Creek, at the Buffalo Chip. And uh, it was, uh, uh, and, and a person who was on the planning committee was in a small group that I was leading for the church. And she said to me, would you like to speak for the cowboy church there? And I had honestly not even heard of it, you know. So uh, anyway, I spoke at that cowboy church service that they had here on that day. And afterwards, Larry came up and gave me just a you know, really strong handshake and said, I really loved that. Uh, and I hope you can do that again for us sometime. But then when, when did you actually decide that you could have a church on the property? Well, I spoke at the next year's Cowboy Church as well, okay. that same Sunday. And then independent of that, I had gotten to the point where I just really wanted to uh, start a new church and have it right here in the town that I lived, right here in Cave Creek. There's lots of bars here, lots of thrift stores, lots of entertainment here, but there was only one church in town. I thought there ought to be a different one. So in any case, make a long story short, my little group uh, uh, was trying to figure out how can we get people to know about us. So that's when I called Larry. Uh, and I'd not really known him well, but I said, could we have an Easter sunrise service there as kind of a community event? We were thinking just one time. Okay. And he said, we could, you can come back anytime you want. And I thought, really? <laughs> and so after we, in, instead of just coming here that one Easter Sunday, we came that Easter Sunday and uh, in seven years, we've never left. We just so kept that, on coming. So that was the beginning, the rest of history. And that's when we became more of a cowboy church. Oh. Why? I mean, uh, you don't normally see a, uh, a church on the property of a saloon. Uh, you have bull riding here, you have this, it's a family place, but it's a saloon. What was it that caused you to think about having a church uh, on, yeah. <laughs> right here on your property? Um, it, you know, and so Steve's kind of modest about this, but, but Steve has always had a good reputation in the uh, religious uh, yeah. community that you know he was outgoing and friendly and genuine and uh, I, I knew that uh, he, he was a man of his word and and so th that impressed me about him but also and I say this uh, kind of jokingly but, but but I mean it I um, I spend all week making sinners out of a lot of people, okay? Uh, you know, th there's alcohol here, there's dancing, all, all the, depending on what religion you are, all the sins are here. I'm, I'm a religious person and I feel like everybody, no matter what they uh, do for a living, no matter what they do, uh, you know, they owe something back uh, to the community, particularly yeah. the, the Christian community. Yeah. So uh, I, I thought that at least once a week, we'd try and do something here at the Buffalo Chip to uh, redeem us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, 
Larry is known for his frankness and yeah. for his honesty, yeah. and that's, yeah. a, that's a good evidence. Yeah. I spend yeah. my week making sinners out of him. Now, maybe on Sunday, yeah. Steve, right. you yeah. come in. And yeah. try, and, try and fix it. Straighten it out. Yeah. 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 So we get that challenge, and we're, we're thankful for and it. And as you see, he's pretty busy with it. I mean, you know, when they first started, I think if he had 20 or 30 people, you know, that was, that was his flock. But... Uh, now it's two or three hundred people or more, and so um, and including he's doing a good job with including us. one of the Cave Creek City Councilmen mm -hmm. and other oh, yeah. dignitaries from Cave Creek. It's it's yeah. it's very become, much a local church. Community. Yeah, it's, it's very, but it's not a traditional church. Right. Yeah. We'll be back with more from Larry and Steve right after this. Stay tuned. I will tell you this. Uh, there are no negatives to Church at the Chip here. I only see positives. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Welcome back. I am in Cave Creek, Arizona at a place called the Buffalo Chip Saloon and Steakhouse. And every Sunday morning outside in the back, they have Sunday morning service. It's a church called Church at the Chip. And I'm talking to the owner of the Buffalo Chip, Larry Went, and the pastor of the church, Steve Gilbertson. Larry, you said uh, that you spend your week making uh, sinners out of people. However, uh, the chip is really known as a family place. You have line dancing here and you have families come in. On Friday night you have the bull riding. You can't even move in this place. Have you had people to comment on the fact that uh, you have church at the chip? Quite frequently. Uh, because a lot of the members at the uh, church of the chip not only go to church but they'll come out to the bull yeah. riding or they'll come yeah. for dance lessons or or lunch or dinner uh, and, and things and and what you hit on is very important to me the family aspect I've I've got family and and I wouldn't want to operate a, a business that uh, precluded members of my family uh, from from coming in and I don't want other people uh, to be precluded from coming in because of their their age. Yeah. But we want families here out of that 2,000 Friday night, probably 500 of them were, you know, teenagers or below. Two or three years ago, uh, Buffalo Chip burned to the ground. It was totally destroyed. Um, you had an opportunity at that point uh, to say, okay, we've done our we've done our church thing, and now I'm rebuilding, and I I don't want to go that direction anymore. But instead, uh, you built you built a covered space out there. You built a church facade that now is the is the platform still outdoors. Um, what was your thinking? Uh, uh, three years ago, on a on a Thanksgiving, I came in and uh, uh, saw smoke coming out of the building, it was early. We had had about 400 reservations for that day for Thanksgiving dinner and a Green Bay game. And so I thought one of the ovens in the kitchen had caught on fire or something like that. Opened the door, uh, the place was just full of smoke. I couldn't make it into the building, called 911. And as it turned out, uh, the, uh, the building had been set on fire by, by an arsonist. An arsonist, yeah. Yes, a uh, transient woman the night before had been in, was smoking inside the buffalo chip, and we, uh, we, we asked her to leave after she refused to put her cigarette out. She made a threat on the way out, and she said, you know what, I'll burn this place down. I think alcohol and threats sometimes go together. <laughs> yeah. We didn't take it seriously. Well, sure enough, she uh, waited in the parking lot, and when our cleaning crew came in uh, in the morning at 4.30, she followed them in and put a lit cigarette on each of the toilet paper rolls. And uh, the place was built in 1951. It was all wood, no alarms, low ceilings. Uh, it, it went up like a tinderbox. So the astute and, and uh, a very good businessman that I am, I had $150,000 in insurance on the building. And the reason for that, I, I alluded to it earlier, I've got 
the two worst lines of insurance out there, rodeo and alcohol. And so I pay about $180,000 a year for that. I made the decision not to put a lot of uh, additional coverage on the building. I, I was thinking to myself, you know, what's really going to take my whole building? Well, an arson will do that. <laughs> but when the place was burned down, you know, uh, you get the feeling maybe they don't want you in this town, yeah. you know? Uh, I mean, that's the first thing that goes th through, through what that went through my mind. There was such an outpouring of support from the community, from the town council, from customers, from our staff, and we had 120 employees at the time, right before Christmas. And so uh, from the time uh, they put a fence around the entire place immediately because it was under the yeah. investigation for arson, people were lined up around that fence for three days. Three days. Um, people were out there. I knew, I knew right away uh, I wasn't going to just really retire and walk away. I knew the community supported uh, the Buffalo Chip. And um, so we, we set about uh, rebuilding. You ask about uh, in, including the, the church. Um, I knew with only $150,000 in insurance and a project like this is, you know, well over a million dollars, I'd have to have a little help from somebody. Uh, so I wanted to stay uh, tight with God throughout that. <laughs> and, and, and I made a promise to, <laughs> to him yeah. Yeah. that whatever brought us to this rodeo, uh, I'm going to continue it. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Church at the Chip here at the Buffalo Chip Saloon and Steakhouse in Cave Creek, Arizona. Steve Gilbertson has final thoughts right after the break. I'd already seen one church plant fail to take root in my life and I was scared to death to try it again. In a lot of ways, I was kind of like Moses who had said to the Lord when he appeared to him in the, the burning bush, Lord, I'm not qualified or Lord, I'm too old or Lord, I'm not, I don't have the gifts that I need for all of this or Lord, I've already failed at doing this once before. We're here in Cave Creek, Arizona at the Buffalo Chip Saloon and Steakhouse and we're actually outdoors because this is where the church at the Chip meets every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. That's right. And Steve, this is a pretty unusual kind of a location, but you have your you have your church building it's here. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it? we love it. I want to be careful <laughs> I don't scratch up your yeah, pulpit Yeah, be very careful. It's that... a very valuable box. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of church in the raw, isn't right. it? Yeah. Now you've been doing this for how many years now? Well, we started seven years ago Easter. Okay. What was it like when you first started the church? I mean, it was a step of faith. Mm -hmm. What were your feelings? Oh, well, we were, you know, we were pretty worried about it, to be honest. We had no funding, no support, and a small group of people. And yeah, you know, it, was, <laughs> it just felt like I needed to do it, but I didn't really know how it was going to turn out. And uh, I kind of say it's almost more of an act of desperation than an act of faith. And uh, uh, but you know, we just felt like we just needed to put feet onto our faith and to put into practice what I've been teaching and step out in faith and and do it to put a church in this town. But isn't that really what faith is about? Yeah. You know, faith is a substance of things hoped, hoped for, for, the evidence of things we Not don't see. see. Yeah. If we know all the end result, then it's no longer faith. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that faith is much a much greater step than other times when we can't see how it could possibly work. That's right. Mm -hmm. So was that a little bit of that? I don't know how yeah. this can possibly work, Lord, but yeah. here we are. So what happened yeah. at the beginning? Yeah, it was really hard that first summer because we were kind of incognito a little bit, but we put a sign out in the fall and started to hope that people would show up. And uh, I remember vividly the day that I was cleaning a pool, which is how we 
supported ourselves for the first four years. And uh, I got a phone call out of the blue when I was standing by a certain filter in a certain spot, I remember it vividly, when someone from the Arizona Republic called us. And he said, uh, we'd like to do a story about your church. And I, I was thinking, he doesn't know there's only a dozen of us here, but um, uh, sure enough, they came in to, to do the, the, the uh, to do a, a story about the church. But I remember specifically hanging up from the phone uh, on the phone that day. It was a flip phone. I didn't have a regular smartphone, and putting it in my pocket and kind of having a this is odd to say, but kind of a moment of personal worship, because it was when the Lord first really began to say to me, Steve, this is going to work. Yeah. I got this. You know, we've been going for six months and it was the first time that I, I would never have said this to our people at that time because, you know, I had to be the guy of faith. But yeah. in my own spirit, that was when I thought, you know, this is crazy. A church, a, a paper's calling to do a story about us. And <laughs> sure enough, they came and did a story, ran us on the front page of the second section of the, you know, the local community paper. And it came out on Christmas Sunday morning, wow. advertising the Christmas Eve service. And we had 180 people that came to our Christmas Eve service that night. And uh, they had you know, how many? 180 people that came to that Christmas Eve service. And a lot yeah. of that was because of that, they read that? I, maybe, I don't know, yeah. And people wow. like to go to church on Christmas Eve. And of course we dropped back back down to 20 or 30 people after that. Uh, but we've been building ever since. And uh, you know, one nice thing about uh, uh, supporting myself and doing it very cost effectively, we didn't have a lot of financial concerns. You know, I didn't have to worry about how many showed up. It's just church. You come yeah. if you like it. And uh, got, and we've never taken an offering. We have boxes out of the back, but yeah. people have been responsive to well, that. We're outdoors, kind of warm today. Yeah. We're headed toward hotter yeah. weather. Yeah. How do you handle the inclement weather, the different types because you have in the winter time it can get pretty cold yeah. in the summertime it can get very hot yeah. how do you handle that well you know in the last two years we've been outdoors every Sunday but once or twice <laughs> and um, um, we uh, you just kind of adapt and honestly at nine o'clock in the morning when we meet even in the middle of the summer it's not an unpleasant experience to be um, outdoors in the shade and yeah. we're done by 10 o'clock and uh, it's not ideal yeah. Um, but uh, but we get to be in this beautiful worship setting oh, the rest yeah. of the well, year. And, you have the but, mountains. Uh, I mean, it's really this, it's a gorgeous area. We do put out fans and we put out misters. In the wintertime, we put out heaters and, uh, you know, everything's going to get improved better. So we make it the best experience possible. But uh, And I make sure I preach about hell every Sunday in the summer. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, especially when it's 115 yeah, right. degrees. Yeah, uh, no, that, I don't. I people don't, but, can really relate yeah, to that. Yeah. Uh, you have the final thoughts for us. What do you, what's your topic? Well, I thought it'd be appropriate to talk about stepping out in faith. And so I'm going to talk about that today. Sounds good to me. I'm All going right. to turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Well, if you come to the Buffalo Chip on a Friday night here in Cave Creek, you're going to find a couple of thousand people here who are coming for live bull riding and a great time and a fun time uh, of celebrating the Western lifestyle. And in fact, it's my privilege to be a part of that every Friday night to say the opening prayer uh, during that time period. We know the dangerous for us to keep them safe. We also pray for the pro fighters in here all night protecting these guys. Keep them safe. And while we're having a good time here tonight, we pray you help us make good decisions so we can be safe too. In Jesus' name, and we all together said, Amen. Amen. But if you come here on a Sunday morning, you're gonna find this church meeting here, the church at the chip. And uh, uh, at nine o'clock, a couple of hundred of us or so, they're gonna be here worshiping here on a Sunday morning. It's been such a blessing for me to be a part of this incredible and unique church family. But before this church existed here on Sunday, seven years ago, God had to get the attention of us, 50 year old, preacher and his wife who'd served in traditional churches his whole life, had always been a senior pastor, but for the last several years had been an associate and um, didn't know if I'd ever have the chance to be a part of a, uh, a, a preaching pastor at a church anymore and, uh, uh, and just was really unsure what the future held for me. I'd already seen one church plant failed to take root in my life and I was scared to death to try it again. In a lot of ways, I was kind of like Moses who had said to the Lord when he appeared to him in the, the burning bush, Lord, I'm not qualified or Lord, I'm too old or Lord, I'm not, I don't have the gifts that I need for all of this or Lord, I've already failed at doing this once, uh, once before. How do I know you really want me to do this? So that 2011 period of fall when I was contemplating this, it was very, very difficult for us. And I remember a particular Saturday 
when my wife and I were working at home and, um, and I get this phone call out of the blue from the Ritz Carlton uh, Hotel. And uh, they say to me, hey, are you available to do a special chapel service here at the Ritz Carlton tonight? And I said, well, sure, I'll be glad to do that. I had no idea, totally out of the blue. And, uh, uh, and I said, well, who's it gonna be for? And they said to me, we can't tell you. I'm thinking, what? You want me to come preach for a group? You want to tell me who they are? No, we can't tell you, but can you come here? Well, I, well, sure, I'll come, but what do I wear? What a suit and tie? What a, sure, that'd be fine. So I start to think that afternoon, well, what am I going to say when I'm talking to people I've never met? I don't even know. I don't even know who they are. And that's kind of like you today. I've never met you and don't know, don't know who you are. And I feel a little bit like that today. And so I'm thinking, what am I going to talk about it. And so I began to wonder, who am I talking to? Will it be some foreign dignitary who's come in? Will it be someone who's, uh, uh, you know, famous? I don't know who it's going to be. So anyway, I show up in there and I begin, I begin to uh, uh, think about what I'm going to talk. And I thought about Moses there in the wilderness. I thought about, I'd been thinking about it that morning. And I thought about Moses when he was encountered by God at that burning bush. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go to talk to these people and uh, I'm going to invite them to be responsive like Moses to whatever God has uh, for them. You know, whenever God shows up in your life, he asks you to do something important. And I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do? This is what I talked about. Am I going to talk about, am I going to be like Moses who said, who, Lord, me? Or will I be like Jonah who said, no, Lord, no? Or will it be like Mary, the mother of Jesus, who said, yes, Lord, yes. So I thought, I don't know who these people are. I'll come in and I'll talk to them about that. And as I, so I show up there at the, uh, at the Ritz-Carlton. I get ushered into a back elevator. And finally, I said, well, who am I actually going to be talking to? Well, as it turned out, I had been invited to be the chaplain for the San Francisco 49ers that evening before they played the Cardinals the next day. Here I am dressed in a full-on suit going to speak in the chapel service. I had no idea. I was so surprised and felt so overdressed, but the people, the guys who were there were so incredibly gracious to me. I shared my message and found them to be uh, welcoming. And as I shared, I couldn't help but tell them about this new church that I was thinking I might want to start. And as I'm talking to them about, yes, Lord, yes, or no, Lord, no, or who, Lord, me, I couldn't help but think, you know, I'm going through that same issue uh, myself. And, uh, and so at one point, the veteran tight end for the 49ers came to me and he said, so tell me, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I said, well, I think I'm going to say, yes, Lord, yes. And that was the first moment for me that this church, crazy church idea became something of a reality in my spirit. So I encourage you, as you think about your own life and whatever it is God is saying to you, stepping out on faith is not having all of your questions answered, not knowing everything's going to be perfect as you do. Stepping out of faith is simply a matter of saying, yes, Lord, yes. And it's because of that yes that then God can open up the doors what might be in the future for you. You might be like me and have lots of fears and concerns about that. But faith is stepping out despite your fears because the object of your faith is Jesus and his call, not the strength of your ability to follow him. So I want to encourage you to say yes to the Lord. As it says in 2 Corinthians, don't say yes and no, but our promise is yes to the Lord. And so I would leave that to you as a challenge for you for the future, and I wish you all God's best as you say, yes, Lord, yes, to whatever he has for you in the future. God bless you. Thank you, good oh, word, good word. You. I think we all can uh, take heart to, to that. Uh, really living by faith is what God expects of us. Right. So yeah. thank you very much. Very much. And thank you for the opportunity to be here today. This has been great. It's a, it's a great story, not only of faith, but of how God can use a lot of different ways and means to reach people. Exactly. So thank you. Thank you. Now, I, I just want to mention that uh, you, you have service every Sunday morning. Every Sunday at 9 o'clock. 9 a.m. year round. Yes. So if you live here in the Phoenix area, Cave Creek, this area, uh, you're certainly invited to come yeah, here. Of course, uh, yeah. On Sunday morning. Love to have you. Uh, if you come here for the season and you're looking for a place for church, 
the church at the Chip, yeah. right here at the Buffalo Chip Saloon and Steakhouse in Cave Creek. <laughs> and uh, we we got our own little church building here. It <laughs> it's great. It's perfect. Once you started to worship outdoors, you never want to go inside. Never want to go back inside. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us for what uh, one of my favorite programs. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Significant Insights.